I'm recording in 720p right now because I just broke three of my SD cards in a row. This is the last one I have and it has four gigabytes. So when I go to record 10 videos at the same time tonight, I'm gonna have to keep editing them and then recording new ones because the card only holds four damn gigs. Anyway, my name's Nodder. Nodder Najat. Gotta always remember that last name. It's the same as the first, but then there's like a little bit extra. Anyway. I make all the Halifax videos. If you look up a video about Halifax, my potato looking head is gonna pop up. And if Nova Scotia Tourism does a quick YouTube search of like Halifax pudding or like Halifax restaurants, like my head pops up. They're probably like, Nancy, what do we do? We spent two million dollars on marketing and this potato looking guy pops up. And well, well Nancy, you can, you can toss me an email, you know, but anyway. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can move to Halifax and I know I already have 2,300 videos about moving to Halifax but I'd have to say that they don't delve deep enough. Today I'm going to help you, me and you, one on one, how? How can you move to Halifax from scratch? You know, you don't know anything about the city, you don't know where to go, you're like, what is a Halifax? Um, is Halifax located in Chicago? I don't get it. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. The first thing you need to do, and I've said this in all of my videos, is create a budget. So you have to figure out how much you can spend before you go. Not the other way around. You don't go and get a place and then figure out how much you need. You figure out how much you're making right now, how much you're saving, how much you need to save before you get here, and then you are ready. You need to get that all in line, get your ducks in a row as they say it, and then come here. So. How do you do it? If you want to create a budget, what you got to do is understand this. When you come to Halifax, you're going to need a few thousand dollars. I'm talking about a few just sitting in the bank, waving around and smiling at you. That's not beer money and that's my suggestion for international students. If you're coming here to stay here for an extended period of time, it is not a holiday hopscotch magical fairy um, rainbow pudding land. It's like what you need to do is understand like, hey, we need, to, we need to create a tight budget. What are my goals coming to Halifax? What am I going to be doing there? Set a goal. Don't come to Halifax because it's different than your country and you think it's going to be a California and you're going to be walking down the street and there's going to be some music and life is going to be easy because it's not. It's damp. Sometimes it's rainy. It's cold. Old, make a plan. Know what this city is good for. What is it good for? It's small, it's developing, it's growing. So, and it's also cheaper than Toronto. It's a great way to get into Canada to start in the East Coast in a fairly large city and then go wherever you like. You can also stay here if you want and make opportunities for yourself. But first question first, how much do you need? Well, financial experts say it, I recommend it, and you know what? I'm going to say you need 6 to 12 months of savings to be able to come here comfortably without worrying. Now you could probably come here with $40 if for some reason they let you here with that. I don't think they will, but if you came here with 40 bucks, you I mean you could survive if you were great, but I'm going to say no. I'm going to say come here Figure it out, like your place is probably gonna cost you anywhere from $400 to $800 depending on how much you wanna splurge. So again, multiply that by six to 12. The closer you get to 12 months, the safer you are because there's always a chance where you won't find work or you get fired or um, I don't know, you decide you're gonna adopt a dog and the dog gets diabetes and you have to buy the dog insulin. I don't know what you're gonna do, but the more you save, the better you're gonna be. You also need to understand how, how much things cost. A general lunch in the downtown district is going to cost you around $10, maybe $12.50, maybe $15. If you order delivery, it's always like a ridiculous amount of HST plus a do don't eat out if you're like just getting here and you don't have a lot of money. Try to buy groceries. I have a video at Atlantic Superstore. You can go and see the prices right now. I'm not going to go over those. I also have another video has almost 20,000 views. A lot of people have watched it just about how much things cost in the city. Go and check that one out as well. Anyway, once you have your budget ready, you are good to go. Now you may be wondering specifics. How do I get to Halifax? I can't just come from India and be like, hi, you can't do that. You have to apply for a visa. What visas are going to get you in? Maybe you're incredible. You can get an H1B2 visa because you're the most famous musician in the world. I don't even know if Canada has that visa. But anyway, 
I'm gonna say the best bet for you is to become a student because you can apply for a student visa. Canada's really cool with it because you're giving our schools money and they like money. So if you can become a student, if you can find a way to save money, to work online like I do for like, oh, I feel like I'm gonna die sometimes. So I can't imagine paying an international stu like student budget. I'm not trying to um, be a wet blanket um, in your ice cream sundae, but I'm just trying to be honest with you here. If you can become a student and find a way to fund it, I mean, thousands of international students do. If you can find a way to get a loan, I don't know, you can get here. Another way is the Atlantic Pilot Program. And you're probably wondering, Nutter, what is the Atlantic Pilot Program? I have no damn clue. But if you look it up, you look up the Atlantic Pilot Program, you find an employer to sponsor you and you can go there and work. You can work on a temporary basis and find new ways to make connections and perhaps apply for a visa to stay longer. Maybe if you're really good at this and you're great at networking and your social finesse is on point, then you can eventually become a permanent resident or maybe even a Canadian citizen. I also don't really know how those work, but I suggest you start with one or two routes. A. Student. Student visa. Stay. Extend stay. Get job. Find connections. Stay forever. Okay? Or Atlantic Pilot Program. Come, work for employer, do a really good job, stay longer, make connections, find out how the shilly dilly wing wang works, stay even longer. So that's my advice for you. Start with those two routes. Maybe there's 47 different ways for you to come here, but I'm not an immigration expert. So those are the two that I recommend. Next. Apartments. If you want to do a deep dive into apartments, I have videos and I even tour my apartment in Halifax. So just look up Halifax Apartments or look up Halifax Apartment Tour. I'll be in the top five videos or navigate to my channel or even just look it up and put my name beside the keyword and it will pop up. So that's how you, you know, find out more about that. But in terms of looking for apartments, I want to give you some main tips. Try to stay here for an extended period of time like a week. I'm going to say like three days to seven days. You can probably do it in two days, but what you need to do before you get here is find a landlord. You don't need a real estate agent. People have asked me, do I need to contact an agent? No, unless you're buying property, you probably don't need to contact a real estate agent. Look for properties. I'm going to give you a few. I'm not going to say whether they're good or not. Some of them may be bad. I've heard awful things and great things about both. Fenwick Towers. I don't really recommend it, but it is a place to live. Pepperell Properties, Pepperell something. That might even be a street. I don't know, but check that out because a lot of people live that I know live on Pepperell. Uh, P-E-P-P-E-R-L-L, -L, I think. Also, Killam Properties, popular, large company, um, great places, generally very expensive. Residents, Dalhousie Residents, um, but Risley, Risley Hall is a party hall. If you like partying, if you like, you want to you wanna move here so you can booze it right up, Risley. Uh, depending on what university you go, if you go to the University of King's College, there's a uh, residence there. You can go to uh, Alex Hall. Alex Hall is a pretty decent residence. Uh, I have a lot of first year memories in that basement that I won't repeat here. But anyway, those are some ideas about moving here, about finding places. Look, when you come here for three days, book viewing. Say, okay, Bob, landlord at Sketchy Property on 35 Sketchy Street. I don't wanna see your place. Let's book a time between 4.30 to six o'clock. Do not give them a damaged deposit. Again, I'm gonna repeat it. Do not give them a damaged deposit unless you are 100% sure you were going to get the place. Don't, they generally will not refund you. That is a sketchy thing that happens everywhere in Canada, all over the world. Unless you have connections to, I mean, um, unless you really kick up a fuss, they may keep your deposit. I had that happen to a friend, but her dad uh, is this really powerful, rich guy, and basically he really came down hard on them and she got her deposit back. But if your name is Bob and you're coming here and you don't really know what you're doing, do not give sketchy landlords deposits. You're going to you're gonna kiss that deposit. Mwah. You're gonna kiss it bye bye so fast. So be careful with that. Understand that. What other elements can we look at when you're moving to Halifax? Networking is gonna be a really big part of it. There's this application online called Meet Up. Meet Up. Like, Meet Up. Just look it up on the App Store, look it up on the Android Store, download it. There's meetups all across the city. If you're in school, Go look at the signs on the wall, go to the Dalhousie website, go to the Cape Breton University website, 
Go look online and find events that people are attending and go to them. Finding people in the city is going to help you out a lot. I also have a video on things that you should not do if you're moving to Canada and I talk a little bit about some social customs. And you know what? Be unique. Be fun. Be a little bit weird. I'm weird as hell. But there are certain things like staring at people for prolonged periods of time directly in the eye for five to ten minutes in a supermarket, things like that are not appropriate. So I go over those in my videos if you want to learn more. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are more socially adept than I am. I mean, I'm as socially adept as a cabbage. But sometimes people just don't have a clue because I've been outside and I've had people make direct eye contact. Like they just want to, you know, they just want to lick one of my nostrils and I just want to, I want to help you guys out, especially if you're moving to Halifax. So those are my tips to you. I understand today my demeanor is a little bit different. I'm a little bit sleep deprived. Um, I think all the nutrients I'm going to be consuming tonight is going to be a donair. And although I'm not really like eating very well or sleeping very well, I'm also deciding to go to the gym and push it like extremely hard for some reason because I, I need to do that. Um, yeah, so I, I've been tired for the past week, but I'm not dead yet. So things are going well. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I'm going to go make nine more videos in one night and schedule them for the next week. So, thanks for watching. Take care. Stay sharp. Stay alive. And, whenever you get the chance, do a dance. <laughs>